The idea of gay marriage being legal in Australia was a long, long way from the discreet world that existed in 1969 when Michael met his partner. I met my partner, Johan, in the Rex Hotel, which was in King's Cross, and it was one of the very few places where police basically left it alone and maybe there was a bit of money passed hands there, I don't know. But um, then I uh, met Johan and uh, then brought him back to um, the apartment and basically we've been together for 50 years and six months. I took him to our family roast dinner on Sunday night about three weeks later and my parents were very intelligent people and to suddenly turn up with this uh, handsome young Dutchman, um, well, you can put two and two together. In fact, you know, when my mother was dying, I felt an obligation to verbalise it. I'd never verbalised it with her. I had with my father, but I'd never verbalised it with my mother. And so when she was dying, I felt I, I couldn't let her die without having been completely honest with her. I, I didn't want to have that, that thought in my mind. And so I said, Mum, there's something I've got to tell you. And so she looked at me with her lovely eyes and, and she wasn't well and she died a week or so later. And I said, I have to tell you that I'm homosexual. And she said, Michael, you've been bringing Johan here for 30 years every Sunday night. I didn't come down in the last shower, <laughs> which was a very 1930s expression. I didn't come down in the last shower. So parents know, and she knew. You were able to bring Johan uh, home to your family, but at work, you still had to hide your homosexuality. Yes, Johan would do things. For example, when I was chairman of the Law Reform Commission, he would prepare the Christmas party at our home in Rose Bay, and he would um, remove all the photographs and other things and uh, get it all ready for and then he would disappear. Tell me about the code to let Johan know when to answer the phone. Well, when I rang him, I, I would telephone and then let it ring, dial twice, and then I would ring again. That was a code. So he knew that this wasn't a judge ringing up the phone uh, or somebody in the law or the importance. And, and uh, he could then lift the phone and he knew it was me or one of my brothers or somebody else who was safe. Wow. But don't think this is peculiar to me. Yeah. This is what gay people had to do in those days. For many years, Michael lived two separate lives. In private, he was loved by a supportive partner and family. But in public, he had to shield society from a truth it was not ready to accept. I want to convey his wisdom and also his determination to stand up for what is just. Thank you.